In this video, I'm going to go over some tactics that you can use to launch your children's book to help generate sales in those very important first days that your book is published on Amazon KDP. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. So you've written a children's story, you've even had it illustrated, or perhaps you've illustrated it yourself, and maybe you are even ready to self-publish it using the KDP platform. But what next? How do you get your book to sell? While Amazon does have a massive amount of customers already shopping its marketplace every single day, your book isn't just going to sell itself and become a bestseller overnight. So just like every other search engine out there, think Google, Amazon also has an algorithm, which in its very basic form determines which books or which products are going to sell when shown to its customers. Because Amazon wants to make money, right? Just like we do. So it's not going to put products in front of customers that based on previous customer behavior and sales history, those customers are not likely going to purchase it. And there are some things that help determine whether a book is going to sell. Things like its popularity with previous customers and whether they actually liked it. This is shown through positive reviews on the book. Also, the sales velocity comes into play, which is how many sales and how quickly those sales come in and how often the book is being purchased on an ongoing basis. If the algorithm sees a book with a proven purchase history with a specific set of customers, it's going to continue to show that book in the search results for similar customers. And there are things that you can do to help kickstart those initial sales. I published my first children's picture book at the end of 2021 after completing a course that showed me how I could create a children's book without the need to hire an illustrator or spend a lot of money on having the book created. That course was called the Children's Book Creator Course. If you are interested interested in getting more information about that course for yourself, the links are down in the description box below. And if you are in the beginning stages of writing your book and creating your children's book, or even if you're only just thinking about it, that course will be perfect for you because it can seem very overwhelming with the amount of things that you might need to do because actually the writing and the creating of the book is really only one very small part of the whole process. So let's go over the, some of the things that I did when I first launched, when I first published my children's book to help generate sales before, during, and after publishing my children's book. First of all, one thing to keep in mind is that promotion of your book, and that's really no matter what kind of book you're publishing, it doesn't have to be just a children's book, but promotion for your book can never start too early. If you are at the stage where you're just starting to think about writing a children's book or you have just started, this is a really great time to just start talking about it. Start creating buzz as early as possible. This can be as simple as starting a social media account and just sharing your journey about writing and illustrating the book. People love seeing behind the scenes of things like this and you can really get people invested early on in the whole process. And best of all, talking about your book on social media while you are creating it is totally free. I've seen people do things like hold contests where you maybe name a character after somebody who is following you, you on social media and enters the contest or allowing your followers to choose things like which cover they like best or maybe something to do with the storyline. You can use this time too to start building an email list so that you do already have a group of people to notify about updates to your book or when your book is actually available to purchase. You can do this by offering something for free to people in exchange for signing up to your email list. And you can also network with other authors and publishers who have their own email list so that you can help each other out by doing something called newsletter swaps. Having an email list when you are launching your book is a great way to generate that sales velocity where you get immediate sales as soon as your book is published, which helps out the Amazon algorithm take notice of your book. During this time, you can even start to build a launch team, people who really like you or really like the idea of your book and are willing to help you out by sharing your book or providing reviews or something like that once it is published and for sale. In fact, 
quite a few of the things that you might want to do during the launch phase of your book needs to be set up and ready to go quite far in advance. So this isn't something that you can just start doing a few days before you're ready to publish your book. These are things that are going to be needed to be done at least a few months in advance. And it might seem like too far in advance to be promoting your book before it's maybe even finished, before it's even published, but you really want to be creating that anticipation along with as big and audience as you can possibly build all before the book is actually published. My advice here is to start planning your launch as soon as you possibly can. When you are ready to go into the launch phase, which is when you are sort of ramping up to publish the book and make it available for sale, there are some things that you can start to do. You don't have to do everything that I talk about here, especially if you don't have the time or the budget to do everything. And yes, some of these tactics are going to cost you money, but implementing even just some of them can be really helpful. So at this point, you should start to get together what social media posts that you are going to want to be posting in the lead up to your book being published. It's much better to have these all prepared and scheduled ahead of time so that if anything comes just up in life, as it quite often does, then it's already done. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to miss a post and you're not all stressed out, scrambling around, trying to think of something to post at the last minute of the day. If you do have an email list, create content that you want to go out to your email list as well. And the great thing is with this kind of content, it can usually be repurposed throughout your social media and your email list. So you don't necessarily have to create brand new, unique content for every type of platform that you're going to be using to contact your followers or your audience. Something else that you'll want to do is decide if you want to give your book away in exchange for reviews. I highly recommend this and don't worry, you don't have to go out and purchase and send out physical copies of your book to people for free. You can provide them and most likely will be providing them with the ebook version of your physical book. There are a few places online that can facilitate this exchange for you. Booksprout is one example of where you can find people who want to receive books for free in exchange to review them. So your book is provided to them before the book is available for sale so that when the book does go live, they can go and start leaving reviews for you immediately as soon as it's available for sale. You can get into contact with book bloggers and ask them if they would like to receive your book with the hope that they will post about it on their blog or just share it with their audience somehow. A lot of book bloggers will also have a service that you can pay for to have your book featured on their blog. If you do have plans to publish more than just one book, it's a good idea to try to build some really strong relationships with bloggers so that you can work with them on future projects. The next thing that you can do that can be really helpful is newsletter newsletter promos. These are extremely common with adult fiction books and people get really great results from them and you can too do this with children's books. While I don't think personally that the results are as good as what you would get if you were publishing something like an adult fiction novel or long length books, it still gives you some really great exposure for a pretty small investment. There are lots of newsletter promo sites out there and you can easily find which ones are suited or have a category for children's picture books. And you'll also be able to see how many email subscribers they have. So how many subscribers your promo is going to go out to as well as the costs of the promotion. These do need to be booked in. So make sure that you organize this far enough in advance so that you get the dates that you want because the dates that you do your newsletter promos are pretty critical around what dates your book is going to be launched. So you need to be quite strategic with what dates you choose around what dates your book is going to be available for sale and how much your book is going to cost. What I did here was I did something called newsletter promo stacking. So I picked uh, three or four, I think it was, newsletter promos that I wanted to do. And then I did one each day in the lead up to my book going live then again when it went live and the couple of days after. And I spent around about $100 all up on the newsletter promos. Once you get to the point where your book is going to go live and available for sale on Amazon, there are some tactics that you can employ in the first week or so of the book being available for sale to help boost sales in those first few days. I do highly suggest publishing a paperback version of your book as well as a Kindle version of your book so that people can read it digitally 
on their Kindle device. Now, you might think it is pointless since it just really isn't the same reading a children's picture book on a Kindle device as it is reading it in real life in front of the child. And kids probably do prefer seeing the actual physical copy of the book. And I did think this too, and I still do think that kids prefer seeing the book in real life in front of them. But I did still publish a Kindle version of the book because that was so that I could enroll it in KDP Select, which is one of Amazon's programs where it allows Kindle versions of books to be available to Amazon's Kindle Unlimited customers. So as a Kindle Unlimited member, rather than actually buying your book, they can sort of download it or borrow it, I guess, sort of like borrowing a book from the library. They can download it onto their Kindle device and read it as part of their Kindle Unlimited subscription. So because they're not actually buying the book from you, what this means is that you get paid per page read instead of actually receiving a payment for someone buying your book. Now, being a children's book, which only have a small amount of pages in them, you are not really going to make a lot of money from people reading your book through Kindle Unlimited or reading the Kindle version of your book. And it does also give people who are not members of Kindle Unlimited the option to buy the Kindle version of your book if they do prefer. But what it does do, which we are mostly interested in, is that it gives you access to some extra promotional tools that you will only get with being part of KDP Select. So I use being part of KDP Select to offer the Kindle version of my book for free for the first few days of it going live on Amazon. I did this to increase interest in the book, to help the Amazon algorithm take notice of my book, and also to hopefully get some more reviews from those people who did download it and read it for free, who may not have gone and often purchased my book otherwise. After the free promotional days were finished, I then set up another promo for the Kindle version of my book where I sold it at a discounted price for a few days. Now, just backing up a little bit, remember when I talked about the newsletter promo stacks that I had set up to promote my book to email lists? who were interested in hearing about new children's books. What I did was I lined these up with my free and discounted promotional days on Amazon so that the newsletter promos that went out to people were telling them the days that my book was going to be free if those particular people were interested in only free books and then then the days that it was going to be available for a discounted price for the people who like to buy books at discounts. Also, if you are happy to keep your book enrolled in KDP Select, you can choose to do these free and discounted promos later on too. They are available to use at other times, not just when your book launches. There are a lot of moving parts that go into a successful book launch, and especially when you get close to your book launching, things can get a little bit hectic, especially if you haven't planned and scheduled everything in advance and keep on top of it. That's why it's so important to really plan this out in advance keep a calendar so that you know what you have booked in in terms of promos and when everything should be going live what days your promos should be going out and when everything should be happening and make sure to check in on every promotion that you have scheduled on every social media post you have scheduled on every newsletter you have scheduled to make sure that it has gone out the way it should have on the days that you wanted it to. These are some of the most tried and tested ways of creating a book launch that many authors have used with really great results. I hope that you have learned about some great ways to promote your book when you are ready to publish and launch your next children's book. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.